Hi guys, I'm Bobsy and this is the third devlog of my dream game. If you haven't watched the first video, you might ask, what game are you making? And that's a damn good question I tell you. Um, I'm kind of figuring it out as we go. On a real note, I'm working on a co-op game about not only surviving in a medieval themed world, but also creating thriving civilization. The scope of the game is big and I'm taking it one step at a time as a learning experience. One of the key aspects is that the game must feel new on every playthrough. Nothing is going to be pre-scripted and even the AI is going to have their own personality and priorities in life depending on different traits. To put it shortly, every NPC will have an impact on the world and never just wander aimlessly while some stuff happens in the background. If you see them doing something, they are actually doing just that. But the AI is for another video in the future. I want to make sure that it's more fledged out to really show you something impressive. In this video, we're looking into procedurally generating the worlds which the game takes place on. You might have noticed that I said worlds in plural. First of all, I personally think that taking inspiration from things you like is a great way to come up with interesting new ideas. I really love the node system in RoomWorld. If you're not familiar with it, here's a short run through. Basically, you start on your own node and planned earth is built up of a lot of these nodes. When you get advanced enough, you can travel to nodes neighboring the one that you're currently on. And I kind of want to borrow this idea. So my twist on it is every node is a small island. You start on one island, you can travel to other islands by boat. These islands will be on different biomes. Some might be desert islands, mountain islands, grasslands, you get the idea. You also settle your town on one of these islands. Even if the player doesn't want to go adventuring, you will eventually be forced to go to other islands no matter what, because of lack of resources. Maybe the mountain biome holds a larger amount of minerals such as stone and iron. And once again, I think you get the idea. Different biomes, different resources. So I think you might have caught on to the idea that in this video we're looking at generating these procedurally generated islands. I've never probably worked with generating meshes. I've looked at Sebastian Lake's tutorials on procedural worlds, but that man is built different from the rest of us. I ain't smart like that, so I sat down and I researched a bit. Braggy's tutorials on mesh generation helped me out a bunch on getting the basic understanding. The rest of it is really just made by me from scratch. It might not be perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm really proud of it, just because I made it for myself. So at this point I got a basic looking terrain thingy, but it still doesn't even look remotely like an island. So I read up a bit more on this and I stumbled upon something called a fallout map. Even though there doesn't seem to be a strict definition of what a fallout map is, here's mine. A fallout map is an equation slash function made to simulate a smooth fallout of something. So, in the case of my procedural world generation, which uses a small section of pearl and noise, it basically just makes the random cutout of pearl and noise go from this to this. And if you haven't gotten the idea, the more white you see, the higher the terrain is, and the more black you see, the lower the terrain is. And because Unity has something called animation curves, it is super easy to add this follow-up map. Now I can easily control how the lower points of the islands fade downwards on the y-axis. But this still doesn't look too much like an island because it needs some textures. It's still just a grey mesh after all. And texturing becomes a bit trickier when something is procedurally generated. I can't just add a fixed texture to it since in almost all cases it wouldn't fit the shape of the terrain, since it's random. This is where shaders come into the picture. It's a beast I was hoping to never have to tame, but here we go. I sat down learning shader graphs only one day after learning to work with meshes. And I must say, Shader Graphs is a super awesome tool, but damn is it confusing learning how to use. I still wouldn't be able to create anything I want to with this tool, but I have learned how useful it is, but I still don't find it intuitive, but I'm sure that will come with some experience. I also just added a water plane from the Cinti Acid Pack, but I finally got around to it. I don't want to get too much into details with this one, but I now have built a shader graph, which allows for different textures for different heights. This means that I can adjust the texture at this place at what height and I also made them smoothly blend between each other. I also set it up so it allows for adjustable detail maps and normal maps so this way the light can actually hit and reflect correctly on the terrain. So now we have something that actually looks like an island and I must say I'm, I'm really proud of the result. But we must admit that the island is still very barren. Even though it might look better it's still not great. And textures shown directly like this doesn't look too great. So let's add some grass. Now this one's a bit more tricky for me because you would obviously need a lot of grass to fill out a whole island and obviously spawning 100,000 objects, if that's how much grass we need, isn't exactly performant. 
But this is where a neat little trick enters the scene. It's called GPU instancing. It is a super handy way to only display meshes with materials without having to spawn them as individual game objects into the scene. This way I can spawn a lot of grass without hitting any performance issues. And obviously I don't need to interact with grass so this is perfect. Luckily for me another fellow developed YouTuber by the name of Flaroon made a great video on GPU instancing which I will link in the description. After working on this for a bit I got it working. I also added the same principle of a fallout map to the grass and voila, we now have grass that smoothly fades in the edges before it reaches other texture than grass. And now let's spawn some resources. For simplicity I'm just sticking with trees for now since these are already set up as prefabs. So I got working on a tree spawner script. I actually have a video on how to spawn objects like this. I just set up a few more variables and functions to make sure they don't spawn, spawn too close to each other and boom, we got trees in the game. And I must say this is really starting to feel like a real island that I can now walk around on and I can actually interact with the trees and I think this is super cool. I found this beautiful skybox for free on the asset store and I decided to add it. Since it's really just beautiful and most likely better than anything I could make anyway. Looking at the island now I'm more excited than ever to continue working on the game. And I'm super excited to finally show the NPCs to you guys as well. But for now you'll just have to enjoy these beautiful procedurally generated islands. Keep in mind that the islands are not done by any means textures and objects are most likely not final and a lot more tweaking will eventually be done to them in a polishing phase. For now we have the base functionality and I must say I've learned so much working on this and I'm actually really proud of the outcome. And that's basically it. If you want to join the discord server it's such an awesome community already with a lot of nice people. The, the link will be in the description and please do leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Do you have any ideas of what I should add next? And if you like the video a like and a tap on that subscribe button is very appreciated. Comments and likes are what really pushes videos to the algorithm so it really helps out. And I can only thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed and have a wonderful day.